him and showering him with kisses. It was at once embarrassing and awesome. Miles knew how much his mother loved him. In a minute, Rio said, still kissing her son's cheeks. Miles put his suitcase on the ground and rolled the wheels down the steps from his apartment to the street. Papa, yamame, okay? Rio shouted, a sad smile on her face. Si, sí, claro, mamá. Adios, Miles shouted. Away from his apartment at last, Miles made his way down the early morning Brooklyn street. He'd have to hurry if he was going to make it to his new school on time. He wasn't making good time. The suitcase was cumbersome and the backpack was really heavy. Maybe I should have packed a little more carefully, Miles thought. Oh, look who's back. Yo, what's going on, bro? Miles snapped to and looked up. He realized he was walking right past Brooklyn Middle School, where he had gone the last few years. His friend Laszlo was standing outside on the sidewalk, and he waved to Miles. Hey, I'm just walking by. How you doing? Miles said, smiling. He was glad to see Laszlo, and more than a little sad that they wouldn't get to hang out at school this year. You keeping them on their toes, Miles? Asked Domingo, another friend. You know I'm trying, Miles replied, trying to sound cool. Look who it is. Nice uniform, another kid interjected. It was that kid whose name Miles could never remember. He felt kind of bad about that. Miles nodded. Hey, they make me wear it, all right? He gestured with his right hand at the school uniform he was wearing. It made him feel uncomfortable, and he was pretty self-conscious about it. A girl ran up from the schoolyard, squeezing in between Laszlo and Domingo. Just gonna walk away? We miss you, Miles, she said, her face sincere. You miss me? Miles replied. I still live here. Wait, you miss me? The bell rang, and the kids threw a collective wave at Miles. Miles waved back, then watched as they ran through the schoolyard and into the building. It was pretty sad just watching it. Miles missed his old friends already. With a sigh, he grabbed his things and continued down the street. Reaching into his backpack, Miles fished out a couple stickers that he'd been working on, some cool designs that he'd come up with overnight. Drawing was a great release for him. It let him work out all kinds of thoughts and feelings on paper. But the best part? Walking around town and slapping his art in places where people could see his work. He peeled the backing off one sticker and smashed it on the side of a mailbox. Then he took another and slapped it on a stop sign with a loud clang. He took a few steps, crossing the street, then stumbled. Before he could even pick himself up off the pavement, he saw flashing lights and heard the whoop whoop of a police siren. Oh, come on, he thought. Seriously, Dad, walking would have been fine, Miles said, sitting in the back seat of his father's police cruiser. Jefferson was listening to the news on the radio and the sound filled the back seat as well. You can walk plenty on Saturday when you peel those stickers off, Jefferson chided Miles, talking over the voice of the newscaster. You saw that? Miles said playfully. I don't know if that was me, Dad. And the two from yesterday on Clinton, Jefferson replied. Dang, Miles thought. Can't get anything past him. Okay, yeah, those were me, Miles admitted. Miles looked forward and saw his dad glaring at him in the rearview mirror. The look said it all. Don't mess with me. Miles sighed and slumped down in his seat, watching the buildings move by as he stared out the window. They passed coffee shop after coffee shop, and Miles had to wonder just how much coffee people could actually drink. So, his father said, trying to make conversation. Look at that, another new coffee shop. You see that, Miles? Yep, I see it, Miles said, disinterested. You see that one? What's that one called? Jefferson said, pointing out his window. Foam party, Miles said, sounding bored. Foam party, come on, Jefferson said. And everyone is just lining up. You see that, Miles? I see it, Miles replied. Is that a coffee shop or a disco? Jefferson said, trying to crack a joke. Dad. You're old, man, Miles said flatly. He slumped even deeper in his seat as he turned his attention to the news broadcast. This is the second earthquake this month, but lucky for these folks, Spider-Man was there to save the day, said the newscaster. Jefferson shook his head.